Hello everybody, my name is Gary Wills and welcome to episode 31 of my YouTube channel. And uh, in this uh, episode I'm going to show you a, a, a slideshow really uh, about the uh, assault on Fort Mulgrave from Toulon 1793, which was a black powder participation game uh, that I took to the other partisan a few weeks ago. Uh, the Other Partisan is the second of two war game shows uh, that take place in Newark uh, in the United Kingdom, uh, organised by the crew at the Newark Irregulars. And I I'd, uh, I'd try and put a game on uh, both their shows every year. This game is one of the 10 scenarios in my new book, Throw in Thunderbolts, A War Gamer's Guide to the War of the First Coalition, 1792-1797 which was published by Helion. And uh, hopefully in uh, taking these games to the shows, people get an idea of what the book's really all about. And here are the uh, supporting materials we used uh, on the day. Uh, and uh, on the right is the roller banner, the desktop roller banner that I used, which gives all the key information about the game that people are, are watching. Uh, on the left is a leaflet, which uh, I handed out on the day, but also used as some of the pre-publicity on uh, social media. The background to the game is that earlier in uh, 1793 in Toulon, uh, the French Federalists uh, rose in rebellion against the government in Paris and sought the protection of the British Mediterranean fleet under Lord Hood. And this consequently resulted in a six month siege um, as uh, the uh, Republicans gathered troops uh, to enable themselves to retake the city. And uh, in December, uh, on the 16th, uh, the night of the 16th, 17th of December, de Gomier, who by then was leading the French uh, uh, Republicans, launched his best troops at Fort Mulgrave uh, on the Care Peninsula and uh, using a plan developed by Chef de Battalion Napoleon Bonaparte. The Allies in this scenario have about two and a half thousand men uh, and they're vastly outnumbered by the French attacking force with seven thousand men. And this uh, action became famous as uh, arguably Napoleon's uh, first serious battle and uh, he took part uh, leading the reserves of the Gamomia's force and you can see here how this has uh, been uh, represented in popular literature. He was actually also wounded uh, in his assault on uh, Fort Mulgrave. And uh, perhaps this is a better representation of what actually went on, a, a strong French column storming into uh, uh, the, uh, the redoubt at uh, Fort Mulgrave. This is another representation which illustrates why the Care Peninsula uh, where Fort Mulgrave was was so important and why Napoleon picked it out. From this peninsula they could bombard the Allied ships in the uh, harbour and force them uh, to withdraw from Toulon. The other thing it shows is the uh, temporary nature of uh, these fortifications. They were gabions and uh, uh, and so forth for the of and the front line that made during the siege, as it were, uh, not the uh, fine brick built um, and stone built uh, edifices that you see in Ridley Scott's film. So what I want to do now is just take you through a few photographs of the setup of the game and you can see it here on the uh, table at uh, Newark and uh, the, what I tried to represent is the whole of the Care Peninsula uh, and as I say I said already this is uh, in 15 mil scale or size of figures anyway. And uh, here's a close up of Fort Mulgrave itself and uh, it was uh, garrisoned by a mixture of uh, British and Sardinian troops and uh, had 20 odd guns. So it was quite formidable in its own right. But the key point is it, it was a temporary construction built of gabions and earth banks 
uh, and so forth um, and uh, was replaced in 1820 I think by uh, Fort Napoleon which is on the same site now and here's a, a closer uh, photo and you can see the guns uh, which are a mixture of um, uh, Royal Artillery pieces and, um, and uh, seamen crewed uh, naval guns and uh, behind them are the infantry garrison made up of uh, three uh, British foot regiments and uh, some Sardinians. Just beyond uh, Fort Mulgrave, a uh, little down the hill, you can see the unfinished uh, redoubt, uh, Redoubt Saint-Philippe, uh, which uh, was therefore not garrisoned during the attack. And in front of the uh, uh, position was a picket line uh, made up of British and uh, Spanish troops. Behind uh, Fort Mulgrave was the Redoubt St. Charles. <clears throat> this was garrisoned by Spanish and uh, Neapolitan troops. And it's also where the uh, commanding officer of, on the peninsula, Mariscal de Campo uh, Isguiedo, uh, the Spanish general, uh, was based when the uh, attack started. On a uh, hillock to uh, their right was the Redoubt Saint Louis, which uh, was garrisoned by some Spanish infantry and uh, some small guns. And finally, we come on to the uh, two permanent uh, fortifications on the peninsula, the Fort de l'Aiguillette, uh, which was garrisoned by uh, troops from Naples and Fort Balaguer, which was garrisoned by uh, Spanish troops. Now let's have a quick look at this, the French troops. So this chart gives you an idea of the structure of the, uh, the French force. De Goumier split his men into four columns. The, uh, the, there are some famous names here. So the first column was led by Chef de Brigade, uh, Victor Perrin. Uh, future Marshal of France. The second column was led by another chef de brigade, Nicolas Brule. Uh, the third column was led by General de Division Henry uh, Delaborde of Peninsula fame. And finally, in reserve, uh, chef de battalion Napoleon Bonaparte led a couple of battalions uh, to be called on in the last extremity. And uh, he, seeing the central position, Dugomier uh, as the commander on a base with a representative of the people sent to keep an eye on things. And here's uh, Victor's uh, column with three battalions of infantry and a converged uh, 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 column of tirailleurs. And this shows Brule also with three battalions uh, of uh, infantry and a converged uh, unit of tirailleurs. And here's Delaborde with his three battalions and included some grenadiers. And finally, Napoleon with uh, two battalions and some tirailleurs uh, in, the, uh, in the back. A bit different to the illustrations I showed earlier on. <clears throat> One of the things that's worth saying is that de Gomier actually kept his best troops back, the, the weaker French troops, the most newly raised uh, battalions were actually in the first two columns. And this is a close up of one of the French columns, uh, gives you some view of the uh, figures, uh, which in this case are all uh, uh, from chariot miniatures from uh, Magister Militum. We also used a lot of uh, uh, miniature figurines uh, infantry as well, which you can see as the photographs rolled by. As you'll have seen in the setup photographs, each of the brigades or columns will have ha had a D20 next to them. And this is uh, part of my system for managing the fact that the game was taking place at night. 
And at the beginning of each move, each brigade uh, rolled three uh, D, uh, D6 uh, to generate a score. And that score was the number of centimetres on the table that the unit could actually see. Uh, which uh, had impact as the game played on. And that score was uh, recorded using the D20. Uh, why didn't I use the, roll the D20? Well, mainly because I wanted to get a, uh, a distribution rather than just a flat average. Now we played two games during the day, uh, a morning game uh, and an afternoon game. And uh, we played the game to completion each time, which is good, uh, using the black powder rules. Um, the, uh, what I'm planning to do here is just show you a collection of photographs that were taken by myself, my son James, who was helping me. And, uh, and I'm also showing you some pictures that I've got from other people's uh, collections, uh, duly credited. Um, the, the way we played the game was that, uh, like the morning game, there was a father and his two sons took the roles of the French uh, column commanders, while James and I organised and led the uh, Allied defence. Uh, unlike my other videos, I won't be giving a commentary on these games because I didn't take photographs. At a, uh, you know, at the end of each term, like I usually do. So this gives you uh, an idea, a flavour of the game, rather than a direct account. And that was the uh, end of the first game, uh, the morning game, which uh, ended in a French win in about nine turns. We were very pleased that the players stayed throughout the whole uh, two hours and two and a bit hours to play the game to uh, the end. And uh, they all thoroughly enjoyed it. And uh, one of the young boys was keen to know how to get into historical war game. Uh, uh, with miniatures. Uh, they played uh, hex and counter games but never played a miniatures game before uh, the, their experience with uh, this uh, participation game. So I was very happy with that. Henry Hyde took a couple of pictures of the game uh, in the morning and I'm showing them here. Uh, and here on the uh, top left you can see yours truly answering a question about the detail of the game. Uh, in action, as it were. Towards the end of the first game, we had people already asking how they could get involved in the game in the afternoon. So we reset about one o'clock and uh, uh, were able to restart and in fact got uh, four players, uh, one to command each of the four French columns. This picture shows the uh, reset of the game from the Allied perspective. And that's in the background is James, my son, who helps me on all of these uh, uh, participation and demonstration games that I, uh, I put on at shows. And here you can see the game reset from the French perspective with the four columns ready to go. At the bottom of the photograph, you can see um, the uh, some of Napoleon's batteries that he established to bombard Fort Mulgrave in the days running up to the assault. And uh, I reproduced these uh, uh, 
because they were there but actually in the game they played no part because of course it's a night attack so they couldn't see their target uh, at that time the uh, the next slides are a slideshow showing you the game in the afternoon as it unfolded So that was the end of that game as well, which we managed to finish before the doors of the uh, show shut. Um, and it was a French win in 10 terms. Again, we were pleasantly surprised that all of the participants stayed from start to finish of the game. Uh, we sort of expected or uh, uh, that some people would just come in and throw a few dice, but these guys saw the game to the end. So that was a bit of a learning point for me and everybody thoroughly enjoyed it. And here are some pictures that Ray at One Lover uh, took and uh, posted on his website and uh, I'll show them here now. So finally, I just want to wrap up the video with a few conclusions. So firstly, the, uh, the, the approach of giving the umpires the allies to control gave two good games where the players <clears throat> weren't limited by the fact that their troops uh, were pretty much restricted to their forts. And uh, so it was easy for, for me and James to uh, just help the players play the game. And, uh, and this was facilitated by is Guiardo uh, being uh, particularly uh, um, ineffective uh, in trying to manage such large forces over a large table. The uh, French won both games uh, using different approaches as they should given the numerical preponderance they had. Uh, but it was interesting the, the different approaches their players took to the game and uh, I certainly uh, helped me uh, with further refining the scenario. Uh, the other thing that happened during the games was that the scenario specific rules for night movement and visibility seemed to work quite well. Uh, the thing I haven't mentioned so far is that in uh, using the, the black powder rules for night movement, I uh, increased the uh, frequencies of blunders. Uh, so instead of a blunder on a 12 or a double six, uh, they were blundering on 11, 12, but also on a two and a three, I removing uh, some of the three move uh, options. And uh, obviously this created um, more chaos in the way the French were able to move forward because uh, they were probably going to have at least one blunder a turn um, to deal with. I modified the blunder as well by taking away the extremes of the blunder. So it, I used average dice uh, with the standard blunder term. So the, the, true, the, the units were more likely to move uh, left or right than uh, charge forward or retire a long way. I think five of the seven players that we had playing the game had not played black powder before 
And uh, the, the thing that was obvious is that it was very easy for them to learn and pick up and, uh, and they enjoyed playing it uh, greatly. In terms of what actually happened in the real battle in 1793, Fort Mulgrave was successfully taken by the French Republicans, although the fact that Bonaparte was uh, wounded, leading the reserve into the action, shows that it was a closer run thing than perhaps uh, you might believe, because uh, he shouldn't really have needed to be used. Uh, and as Napoleon had predicted, the capture of the uh, peninsula meant that the guns on the peninsula could be trained on the Allied shipping. And this forced the Allies to evacuate on the 19th of uh, December. And the siege was over and followed by severe retributions meted out by the, uh, the representatives of the people when they got into Toulon and went hunting for collaborators. So thank you for watching uh, the video this far. Uh, the game will also be at Salute next year uh, in April, uh, Salute 51. And if you're in the UK and you can get along, why don't you come along and have a go at the scenario itself. So if you like what you've seen, uh, please uh, consider buying Throwing Thunderbolts and look at it, this scenario and, uh, and lots of others. You can also see on this page uh, my other publications. Uh, Wellington at Bay is also published by Helion um, and uh, Glorious Feet includes a chapter of mine on uh, McCune at Salamanca and the 100 years of the Army historical research uh, includes uh, my research on the Battle of Lincelles which also took place in 1793. And my own publication, Wellington's First Battle, is also available. And if finally, if you did like the video, please consider liking and subscribing to it.